Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Wilma Hodges and I'll be moderating this session. Please note that all of the attendees are muted for the session. So if you do have any questions, please enter them into the GoToWebinar questions box. Um, you can feel free to enter questions at any time throughout the presentation and our presenters will either address them during the session if it's appropriate or they'll um, answer them toward the end during the Q&A portion. The session is being recorded and it will be available at a later date for viewing on the Imperio YouTube channel. Um, so we'll send those out, links out to folks probably a week or two after the conference, after we get them all uploaded. If you do have any problems with audio or video, just enter a comment into the questions area and we'll try to troubleshoot that for you kind of behind the scenes. Um, this presentation is titled, Be a Stripper, Single Files for Multiple Sakai Sites Within Google Drive. And our presenters for this session are Tamara Swedberg and Deborah Bory holtz Tamara Swedberg is uh, an Instructional Technology Specialist at the, e, or at the Edward J. Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy at Rutgers University. In this role, she helps professors design and construct hybrid and online courses with complex assessments, audio, and video. She teaches workshops for the undergraduate internship course, including research poster design, PowerPoint design, and LinkedIn fundamentals. Other projects she is involved with include self-paced online uh, course design, web design, and video conferencing. Tamara has a master's degree in psychology from Appalachian State University. Deborah Bory Holtz is an instructor at the Blaustein School as a senior research analyst for the School of Management and Labor Relations. Bory Holtz also received her master's degree in public affairs and politics and her doctorate in planning and public policy from the Blaustein School. She's been an instructor at Rutgers teaching writing, public policy, and method courses at both the undergraduate and graduate level since 2006. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. All right, thanks Wilma, appreciate the introductions. Um, again, this is the Be a Stripper uh, presentation and it's um, how to use Google Drive and Sakai together. So I wanna start, uh, this is a, um, an overview of who we are again. So Debbie is the professor and I'm Tamara and I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist and we, we teamed up on this project a couple years ago and we've had some really good success with it so we wanted to um, present that today. I want to start out with a poll and um, ask you guys if you are currently using uh, Google Drive or not so if you can see that poll if you could um, let us know we kind of want to get an idea of, of our audience and, and how familiar you guys are with Google Drive. So again, if you see the poll, if you can just let us know if you, um, looks like about 70% of you have answered. So there may be a few people who are not at their computers right now. So it looks like the results right now that most of you use it all the time and the rest of you are familiar but don't use it all the time, which is great. So that, that gives us a, a good idea of how to present some of this stuff so you're familiar with some of the sharing options and stuff like that. So that's helpful for us going forward. So how this got started, how our project got started was Debbie has been teaching for us. She taught for us when she was working on her doctorate and now we've hired her full time. She teaches lots and lots of courses and she teaches multiple sections, um, especially research methods, and they are in all types of formats. So she has some that are fully online, she has sections that are hybrid, and some sections that are face-to-face, -face. and sometimes also undergrad and graduate within the same semester. So what happened was that she has all this, it's a lot of documentation that she has for this research method. She has documents like lab assignments, she also has a lot of presentation material that she uses in class and she posts online and it wasn't just research methods but some of these documents and presentations were used for some of the other classes that she teaches. So we had, if you if you know Sakai, which obviously is a, a Sakai conference, it's every time you duplicate a site you make a copy of that document and so we had all these different classes, all these different copies of these documents and presentations. So 
you know, what happens is that you teach a class one semester and not the next semester, and so you go in and you update one of the presentations and you make a copy of that other site and you're like, oh, I forgot that this presentation, I updated because it, it had a typo, and there was multiple copies of files across all these sites and you had to go into multiple sites to do the updates and the version control just got out of control. It just got extremely confusing. So the solution that we really needed is to be a stripper, to strip all this stuff out. We needed a central repository that could keep all of this stuff that was shared across multiple sites and somehow instantly update this to all these Sakai sites, right? So one file would feed all these different sites. So what we came up with was to use Google Docs or Google Drive. And the first thing that we did was we converted all of the documents, right? So the Word documents and PowerPoints and Excel all became the Google versions of those. And also, Debbie did a really good job. She took like a whole summer and arranged everything into folders and, and color-coded them and so forth, made it all nice and neat. So it looks like most of you are pretty familiar with this, but I just wanted to do a demo of, of how we got started with converting the Google Docs and then the different sharing options. So I'm going to flip over um, here. So this is, um, this is Debbie's Google Drive, which is, which is very impressive, very color coordinated. This is sort of a, a sample folder that we're working in today, but I can create a new folder here and I just call this test presentations, okay? And then all we did was we, where did that go? <laughs> I created that and it went away. It's under here. Oh, it, it, it's under my, um, oh, there it is. Okay, sorry, it was, it was underneath my um, go-to webinar. <laughs> so I'm gonna go into the test presentations and I can drag and drop some files here or I can um, just upload. So under create, um, actually this is a little bit different, I'm going to upload a file and I'm just going to upload this PowerPoint. Actually before I do that, I get ahead of myself, I need to come over here and look at the settings. So under the upload settings, what we did was we made sure that the convert uploaded files to Google Docs was checked. That way they come in and they're automatically converted so that we could edit them, okay? You can upload PowerPoints in here or anything else, but then you can't edit them. So I made sure that we converted everything. So I'm gonna upload a file. And it's asking me if I wanna share it because it's going to take on the permissions of the folder. Okay, so now we have this presentation in here. It's one that I, it's sort of a sample presentation I use for a lot of things called 10 Ways to Relax. It's kind of a fun one. So then when you get in here, obviously it converts it to um, a Google presentation so that you can easily edit it. So once it's in here and converted, you can click on any of these text areas. You know, maybe it's not 10 anymore. Maybe it's 11 Ways to Relax, something like that. And it automatically saves it, which is one of the, great features about Google Drives that you don't have to constantly go in and save. So then after we've uploaded this and made any changes that we need to change, then we can go to the share option and there's obviously two ways to share. So anyone with the link can view and this is what we want for the students. So we could take this link and copy it and then paste it into a lessons page and we're going to look at that in a little bit. Um, it's basically to send this to students so they can view it. Um, the TAs, Debbie has a lot of TAs for her classes because some of them get quite large. How many people are in your 125. research? 125. 125 students in, in, the, uh, in one of the research methods sections this semester. So there are TAs. So um, I'm going to actually just put myself in here as, as TA because we're in her account. So you can add a TA here and the TA then can edit. All right. And then this would send me an email basically saying that um, a new document has been shared with you that you can edit. So the TAs can edit, but the students with that link can only view. Okay? Does anybody have any questions uh, about any of that so far? It looks like most of you um, have used it before, so I'm, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the upload and, and also the sharing options on that. But, you know, feel free to type a, a question or, or something in the chat. So I'm going to hand this over uh, to Debbie for the next few slides. 
So the best part about stripping in public um, or stripping in Sakai in public is that I can do it without embarrassing myself or getting arrested. Um, the, uh, as Tamara indicated, I would teach multiple sections of methods and would use the import features in Sakai or the um, duplicate features and a lot of times the links would break um, or um, other things would happen. So I think there's probably three or four advantages that um, come top of mind to me. Every week sometimes I find a new way to use it. Um, but clearly the advantage is that I can show it, I can share my materials widely. And by widely, I don't mean just the students that are sitting in section 01 or the section 90, you know, 90, which for us is an online section. So as Tamara said, um, I'm co-teaching with an instructor at this big lab that we're experimenting with. It has 125 students in it. And I also still have an online section of methods. So across um, all of those six sections, um, we have uh, three TAs and uh, five are face-to-face -face, and one of those modalities is completely online. So I can share these materials. I want, for me, I want the online students to get the same experience as the face-to-face -face or my hybrid method students. So for me, I can share the same materials that we're utilizing in the face-to-face -face with the online students um, in that setting. The um, while you can share resources from site to site, um, it's very clunky. Um, I do a, have a lot of sites. I generally don't hide them after a semester because in methods courses, I find students are using those resources in their internship and even in their first job. So I tend to not kick them out of the site. And um, so I have multiple sites to search for, and it becomes very cumbersome to move a resource. Um, the other disadvantage of having all of your resources housed within Sakai is that um, you got to be in the site to be able to access it. Um, and as Tamara demonstrated, I can simply um, have a link. I can make it uh, private. I can make that link anyone who has access to it public. And so all I have to do is take that link and send it out in an email um, or share it more widely uh, with my TAs. And I just give them access to the entire teaching folder for that course. So they have access to every resource that's in there. And there's probably over 100 resources. I don't use them all in every semester, um, but um, I don't want to lose access to them. The other uh, unique advantage um, is um, uploading requires, uh, you know, if you make one single change in a document that's in a resource folder in Sakai, you have to upload it um, again. And sometimes I've created that material in my office here at Blaustein. Sometimes I create it on my laptop. Sometimes I create it on my desktop in my office at home. And if I don't have that actual resource, the original resource that I, I amended, um, I can't upload and change it. And it's a disincentive if I want to go in and tweak something um, because I have to almost recreate the and remember can, where I did it. You download it and then make the change and then re-upload it. That's it's, what I mean. That's clunky. a hassle. It, it's kind of clunky. If I can find it. If you can, well, you can download it. I have like guy. 52 resources. <laughs> my favorite is my final, final research method, method uh, lecture folder. I think one of the other unique advantages is that with the, using, uh, putting my PowerPoints in uh, Google Drive, and we'll demonstrate this in a little bit, is that um, I can link to an individual slide. So I can tell students, hey, we covered that. It was in week seven in the qualitative focus group slides. That's still not going to get them to where they need to go. Um, and this way I can link on a particular slide for them. Um, the other great thing about using Google Drive um, or storing everything in Google Drive is it integrates with Sakai very easily. Um, as Tamara demonstrated, I can give instructors or my teaching assistants uh, different permission levels. Um, in, in this link that I've hyperlinked in the presentation we'll make available, I won't show it right now, um, we have all these great uh, tutorials that Tamara has created. Some of them are Google Dinks, some of those are Jing's videos on how to do something, how to use the quiz tool, um, how to move the, you know, how to use gradebook. And with every new semester, I get a new crop of TAs and I have to constantly teach them. And I also don't want to just tell them to run to Tamara. So once we create that resource, because um, we rely on her heavily, so I don't want to burn her out, um, I, I store it all in one of those folders called uh, Tutorials, and this links to that. Oh, let's look at it. Why not? Oh, here's all the tutorials. Oh, this is good. I so, like this. I haven't really seen this. 
all, all my work summarized into different documents. So, and then these link, I can tell that these will link to different Jing videos. Right. And some of those like are links, some of those are other instructions, but I tell my TAs, go to this folder first and then come talk to me or Tamara. I like it. Um, the other great thing, and we'll talk about this again, is I can send those links out in emails. I can open them up in uh, office hours, and I can have everything prepped for students. Uh, so we'll, again, we'll demonstrate that in a, in a few minutes. Um, this is the, uh, as I started to touch upon, I think the great advantage is that it's easy Sakai integration. Here you're taking a quick view of my lesson page set up in Sakai, so you can see that my PowerPoints are um, highlighted, or I'm sorry, hyperlinked here. These are some supplemental materials, and then under each of these, um, I actually um, put the video links, or I'll put the lab exercises. I have found, and I'm sure you, for, you know, for those instructors out there, um, at, is that people don't want to do a lot of reading. Um, they want their if, lesson tool is great for housing things all on one page. Um, but still, um, it becomes easier to put the direct link here and on the same page um, to go with it. And I can also control whether it opens up in a new window or not. So this is back to Tamara here in, ter in terms of sh demonstrating some of the integration tools. Right. So I just want to go over um, quickly how the three main ways that we link these Google documents back to Sakai. Uh, the first one is the lessons tool. So we're going to look at, this is a copy of one of Debbie's site. Actually, let's start out with the syllabus tool since we're in it. So the new syllabus tool allows you to put a bunch of different things in here. So she's got a link to her course syllabus. So this opens up and the syllabus is right there. So that's quick and easy. We can look at the office hours, which is in here, and the calendar we're going to go over in a minute because it's brilliant. I'm not going to click on that right now because Debbie's going to talk about that. Um, but it's great. So office hours, this is when I'm available. You want to sign up for a time, you click on that. That's a Google spreadsheet and a little bit about the office location. So the first thing um, is just linking to the syllabus that way. If there's any typos or anything in that syllabus, you can just go right in here and, and make a quick correction. Obviously, you don't want to make a lot of big corrections because this is your contract with your students, but if you type somebody's email in wrong or something like that, you can just backspace and it automatically saves easy peasy. Okay, the um, the lessons tool, I'm sure that most of you have, have used this. If not, just let me know in the so chat. So let me just show them one other thing. Sure. Back on the, as Tamara says, we don't like to change our contracts with the students, but in in terms of the, um, is this the yeah, that's yeah. it. So at the very bottom here, the one thing that does tend to change in a, in a syllabus is the semester calendar. So instead of um, embedding this, I have it linked here now where it's actually, and this is a prior semester, where it's all in a doc here. So if the class, and I put this in my syllabus, if, you know, I'll never give them a date or a deadline beforehand, but it is possible that as we're working through something, um, I have some flexibility built in that we might extend it. I will always let people know that through Sakai, um, but invariably I can go right in here and I can change a homework date, I can change a quiz date, or I can change an assessment. So I, that's, the, that's the one part of the syllabus that sometimes you just have to allow more time on a particular, and I rather, I don't want students to have a dated document, so yeah. that's an advantage. That's great. Uh, so the next place is the lessons tool, and so um, I'm going to just take a look at maybe just lecture four here. So here's a link to the lab slide, so this is the presentation, and then there's a link here to the discussion. Debbie's going to go over how she uses Google Docs for her discussion. It's great. So I'm assuming you guys know how to do this, right? Just add some content here, add some text, you know, and this would be something like you know, presentation, and then you highlight it, and then you would go back to um, the Google Doc that you see if I can go back to the one here. Let's see. And the share link. Oops and grab this link and go back to Sakai and just link this right up. And I can have this open in a new window if I feel like it, okay, and hit save. And obviously she's made hers a little bit prettier. And then you can reorder these or whatever, but th that's, the, that's the basic. The other thing that you can do is, um, this is great, so all these little icons that have the globe by it, this is using the um, 
the web tool. And so I guess Jared is one of your TAs? Yes. Okay, so Jared gave everybody some feedback. And instead of like hiding it somewhere, he just put a big button right on the side. And to do that, you just go to Site Info and go to Edit Tools and scroll all the way down to the web tool. It's at the bottom, the web content, sorry. And hit Continue. And then give it a name, you know, Feedback or Quiz 1 or whatever. And then for the source, you're just going to paste that link. Now, the link I'm pasting is the one to the, to the presentation that I had on my clipboard. Did you guys get the idea of that? I'm going to just hit cancel. But it, it basically ends up like any of these buttons over here. And it goes in the, the Google Doc is displayed right on the page. So it's not two links. It's just one link. All right. So that's, that's how you integrate it in Sakai, three easy ways. And just as a side note, we have a screencast account right now that we're uploading all the videos to. Obviously, you can use YouTube, or if we ever get good video hosting at Rutgers, you know, <laughs> that's my soapbox. I'm going to get back off. Um, that, again, taking it, all the videos out of Sakai so you're not copying all those over and over again and putting them somewhere else and then linking to them. So here's our demonstration in terms of the Sakai page. Um, again, I guess if we go back to the Sakai um, site, um, it is linked in this document. So up here, um, if we go to the home page, um, I'm sorry, if we go to the office hour page, again, as Tamara said, this is actually using the web content tool. So I was using uh, the sign-in sheet, uh, sign-up sheet right here. Um, you'll still see it's displayed here because I was I gave my TAs to use this option or um, another option. Um, in past years, when I'm not co-teaching with an instructor, a big lecture, um, I will just um, have a tab. I will have a tab for my office hours, and then I'll have a tab for my TAs for that section. Because sometimes, particularly at the end of the semester, when we get a run on office hours. Uh, students will sign up everywhere with everybody, and with you know even with an average class size of 50 students, it's very tough to get to everybody. So if they can't meet with me before I decide to open up any of these extra office hours, which are just the X's, um, I will actually um, check with my TAs and see if they have that student coming in, um, and then if not, um, or they can't come in during those office hours, um, I can open up some additional office hours. This is an edit feature, so a student can actually just type right in. Um, the interesting thing about this, and this is one advantage over the sign-up tool, again, to use the sign-up tool, you have to be in a Sakai site. So I could change my office hours for um, my, you know, my, you know, maybe my public policy class and not add additional office hours or make them available to my policy theory class and my methods class. Um, but if a student wants to come in that I had last semester or a stu potential student wants to come in or someone who's doing an internship with me, um, if they're not in a Sakai site, they can't access that tool. So on my personal calendar, I will block out this time, and I know that I'm meeting with somebody between 11 and 2 on Wednesdays. But when a student says to me, can I come meet with you, I just basically say, go to the office hour link and see if I have available time. So you can and just it, email them the link if they're not. And if they're not in the site, as Tamara said, I just send them the email because I think, I think that extends really it good, widely. I think that's a really good point because I'm sure that as instructors, that happens all the time, right? You have a student from last semester who wants to meet with you about something or, like you said, a potential student wants to say, hey, I, you know, I'm, I want to know more about this class or this major. Can I meet with you? And if it's only in Sakai, they can't access that, whereas this is out on the web. Just here's the link to my calendar. Sign up for whatever spot works best for you. So I think this is I can brilliant. share it with my husband, too. <laughs> like, What's sign up? Schedule? Yeah, yeah sign, sign, up. sign up for, for a sign time. Up. Okay. Um, so the other great thing, too, is that um, I when I get emails from students, can I come meet with you, um, I'm just like, I don't know. So <laughs> go look, and if you can't find something, then email me, right. and then I'll figure it out. Right. You don't even have to look at it. Just here's the link. So the next application, and clearly we started talking about this advantage, uh, it, you know, initially uh, as I was pulling my hair out um, from semester to semester with Broken Links, Tamara, um, I think this was her, um, you know, her therapy session was to help me find a solution. So clearly the advantage was to the instructor um, and to keep me sane. Um, but I think now that Google Docs is almost, you know, 
it's, it's, it's super friendly for students. Um, and, and there's several ways to do it. In addition to just being able to share documents or update documents, um, I can do uh, peer reviews and another research writing class that I teach. Um, part of that is giving feedback on either a literature review or the students giving feedback and they can go right in, they can do it anonymously, they get these cute little animals at the top of the Google Doc and they can say, I was the rhino um, or I was the monkey, the cheetah that day, and they can go right into a student's document and add comments. I found that when we were doing paper exchanges and I would make comments to students, they, it was just too much and, and they, didn't, they didn't take advantage, they were overwhelmed. So it, it's great because it's all in one document. Um, I can see if the student has, um, as if you use Google Docs, you can see that there's versions. You can, re, you know, you can return things to its original version. You can see actually who made a change to a version. Last night when I was preparing for this, I was making changes without realizing I was in my current class site document oh, for the okay. calendar. Yeah. Right. But I just went back to the earlier version and changed it back. So it was it was super easy to do that. Um, the other advantage is that um, you can see, as I mentioned, you can see all types of versions. Um, prior, you know, you don't lose anything at all. Here, we're going to demonstrate this little uh, documentation um, in terms of an assignment. Um, I find that I use this even for my face-to-face -face class because if they come to office hours or they have an email, um, I will use these links. Um, but I use it uh, heavily for the hybrid and I use it heavily for my online students. Um, one of the constant feedbacks I get from students and it frustrates me is I can't find anything. There's too much stuff in there. It's not organized. I am like uber organized to the anal point um, where you know I've got my, my folders color coordinated because I know that answer keys are in red. Um, but, um, but students for some reason, you know, as, as much as they multitask, I think if they can't see it or find it in the blink of an eye or three seconds, they find that it's disorganized. So as, as great as the lesson page is, um, at the end of the day, when they're working on assignment, they've got one document open, and I want to be able to link to all of their resources in that document. So we're going to demonstrate this now. Yeah, click it. Or you can just click it. Okay. So here is uh, a current assignment, actually. It opened up today. Um, on Sakai and when Feel I was free to turn it in. Yes, that's right. And you can <laughs> see how well you do jumping in the middle of research methods. <laughs> um, so it is a freshman. Uh, I'm sorry, it's this upper level senior class, but I use it as well for uh, my method students because they've just they've never run SPSS, they've never put a presentation table together. They've just they they and they have wide variety of skills, just like folks here. Some are experts in Google Docs. And some of my you know, most talented, bright, accomplished um, you know, colleagues here are like, what's that? I, I, don't, I can't do that. I'll send it to you in an email, which also is another advantage um, because I don't ever lose last versions of things in email trails. But here is um, the current assignment. It opens up. If I need to clarify something because um, I think that there's a question wording problem, I can go right into the assignment. Sometimes I may go in and put that I've updated it. I'm not technically changing the instructions, I'm clarifying something. So I don't have to recirculate it. Um, but here's the nice part. In this one, they've got multiple resources that they have to access. So this can, I can actually put a data set in SPSS or Stata and link it right here. Now just the look disadvantage at, is, yeah. right, you cannot preview it, okay? Um, but you can just go directly and download it, download it if your machine has SPSS on it. So that's the data file, that's the first link. That's the first link. The next two links here is, um, this is the actual instrument. This is the um, Eagleton Center for uh, Public uh, Interest Polling. And so we actually used an Eagleton poll, recent Eagleton poll about the governor and post Sandy. And you can see I just used their document, so I just converted it up here. And of course, again, the students can't edit this document. Um, I also excerpted a piece for the methodology and for the code book, because we do do recodes, I created a Google Doc in Excel so students could cross-reference it fairly easily because um, they tend to be, code books tend to be a little dense anyway. Here's what the one other a link. So now a student's going to sit down for the first time and they're going to run a frequency. I have taught them this. We have practiced it in lab. We've, they've got narrated videos. They've got static videos. They almost, they've got too many ways to look at this. But at the end of the day, in this assignment, I'm going to get output, SPSS output. Um, in my papers, and I don't want that in my final document. 
Um, and so they, when I say I want a final presentation table labeled here table A, they don't remember what that looks like. So here is what I tell them, this is what should not be in your paper and this is um, what should be in your paper. And so when I mean final presentation paper, it's got to look pretty like this. Um, but I've given them this. Obviously, you can see here that this is my well, slide. Let me back up. So okay. those of you who haven't seen this, I don't know if you realize what, what Debbie did, but she's linking to a slide in a presentation. So it's not just, here's the presentation, go to slide six and it should be there kind of thing. Each slide in, in Google Docs has its own URL. And so you're not going to share the whole thing. You're actually going to go up and slide and share this so you see particular this here. slide. So if I go slide here, I, it's going to go to the title slide. If I want to remind them about waiting, it's going to go to slide, what, is, what it views as page 42. That, that's brilliant. I had no idea it did that until I started looking at her materials. So instead of just pointing people here and then the students would have to go through, it goes right to the slide that she wants it to go to. Oh, we only have a few minutes left, so let's go back. So um, how do we get back there? All right, so did we get all the links in here that you wanted yes. to go over? All right, so, so I think the next here. thing that we want to move on to then is uh, to show oh, you yeah, the group is the group discussion. So I started using this this semester. Um, as you can see, I surveyed students at the beginning of the class, um, and this is my online class, and I said, what would you like to have your class discussions in? Facebook, in the past I've set up a private Facebook group for them, or you want to do it in Google Docs. And I was leaning towards Google Docs because I am now, they are going to Google. I find that with students, it's got to be the same thing over and over and over again um, for them to, you know, kind of capture it. So 60% of the class said they actually had a prefer preference for Google Docs. A great advantage here at Rutgers, although a few don't have Google accounts, mostly everybody has Gmail accounts these days. Well, I think that's that's the news. So they should all have Scarlet Mail accounts. But that's right. At Rutgers now, they all have Scarlet right. Mail accounts, which is really an alias because it's a Google account. So they can just use their Rutgers account to log in if, in fact, they're creating their own document. But here you'll see um, Tamara referenced it on the lesson page before. They can go right into the section. I copy and paste the the assignment, this was on the lesson page, I give them their ground rules again, and then I assign them to groups, and then down here it was a free-for-all. They had to figure it out, I want them to work in teams, they started um, indicating how to contact each other, what their emails were, if they prefer text or anything, and then at the very bottom um, I give them a section that actually allowed them to put their group work. And the advantage to this is when they're studying for their um, their midterm, which they just had, or they're, um, they're doing an assignment, they can actually go back to the, the document that they worked in and they knew where it was linked. So I'm looking at the questions real quick to make sure I didn't um, miss anything. We'll come back to these at the end because there's some good questions. So the other advantage here is clearly you don't just have to use this with students. You can uh, easily share this and give permissions. I use this with my interns when I'm collaborating with another professor on a document we're writing or an abstract. Um, I cannot stand, stand track changes. By the time <laughs> everybody gets done track changes in Word, um, I can't, it's, the document is not even comprehensible. Um, so here you can put them in comments um, or you can make the edits right in the document. It shows who made the edits. Um, the other advantage is, again, uh, with students, I don't have to worry if they have the current Word edition or they have pages or they don't have numbers or Excel or PowerPoint are key. Some will have some word processing, but at, at, at maybe at a public institution like ours, you will find that they don't have the full suite. They don't need any of that software to be working in the documents that we're giving them. Um, again, I don't have to remember where it is. I only have to remember what it is. Was it a homework assignment? Was it a lecture? Was it a quiz? And I can go right to that folder in that particular class and get it. Um, so, as we said, you can upload all your documents um, into uh, one advantage. Um, it's uber easy to use on your smartphone. I have long ago decided I need to be in their phone. If I can get my course instruction in their phone, I'm going to be, I'm going to have, I'm not going to pull out my hair as much responding to the same thing. And I'm actually going to get them to, to use it. Um, oh, they all text now, right? Even email's a little date dated for them, so I can take those links and I can throw them into a text message back to them. The other advantage is recently I was on the sideline watching my daughter's, my 12-year-old soccer game and a student had an assignment on the street and I like to be accountable to students 
And I thought, oh my gosh, I have to explain this. And I went, wait a minute, I already wrote this. It's in a Google Doc. So of course on my phone, I have my own Google Drive um, app. I went right in. I found it. I didn't have to log into Sakai. I didn't have to navigate through it. I went right in. I copied what I wanted or I took the link. I put it right back in the email. And one of the things, the most positive comments I get from students is, oh my God, you're so accessible. You're so great. Thank you so much. And it's really, I, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm, <laughs> You're not I'm cheating. finding the easy way out. No, it's all good. So there are some drawbacks. Um, as we previewed, you can't you can't preview everything. I don't find that a big impediment. No. Um, PowerPoint animations don't always convert. That's I guess my biggest frustration because um, I do like to use animations. But here again, I find that I will give students and I will tell them you must look at this in present mode or show show mode you know, slideshow mode, and guess what? They don't. So a lot of times I'm making animations and it's hiding the really, like when I'm trying to teach them from a frequency to a cross tab, what they're really studying, and the little pies I make come together as a layer cake, they're not even getting the advantage of that. So one of the things I do now is I videotape my lectures or some assignment aspect of it. And, um, and now I'm going to link, because I was thinking about this last night, I'm going to put the hyperlink to, if I have animations I really want to see, I'm going to put that hyperlink to the title slide. Um, so they can actually, if I think they need the animations, they can link right to it within the PowerPoint. And we use Camtasia for that, if you're curious. So all of our instructors get a, a copy of Camtasia to, to make this recording. And we get Tamara to help us make this <laughs> They can look pretty. They can make some good recordings. We got, we got everything. And then one of the other disadvantages that I found is that you can start in PowerPoint, right, and upload it you know, like we did, or you can just start in, in Google Drive and make a new presentation. But I find that the, the templates for the, the Google ones are, are real limited. They're, there's only a handful of them. I know that's going to get better over time, but I, I still tend to start with PowerPoint and then, then upload just because they look a little bit nicer. I, I've done both, but that's, that's not really a huge drawback, but a little bit. So I think we finished about on time. If you would like a copy of this presentation, I did upload it to um, our shared long, long site space, and also you could use this bit.ly via stripper. Um, if you have questions after the fact that you want to email us, we put our emails on there. But I'm going to just um, look at the, the question pod here and, and see what you guys um, had asked. So the first, the last question, let's see, let me scroll up here. Ooh, a lot of questions. Um, I have a hard time viewing this. Let's see. Okay, maybe I click on this. Okay, so does your school, so the, one of the questions is your school use Google Apps and is this your own personal Google account? So yes and yes. So our, our Rutgers University adopted Scarlet Apps, it's called Scarlet Apps for Education, it's a Google Apps for Education. They moved all the student email over to it and faculty and staff do have access to that account. I think that both Debbie and I are using outside accounts just because we had them already and we got started there already, but we do have them. Um, there is an advantage if you have a ton of stuff that right now there's like unlimited space over there. So I'm, I may end up moving my stuff over there, but um, it is available, but for this demonstration right now, um, we are using our personal Gmail accounts. Um, is there integration between Google Drive and Sakai or it only works in the form of links. So there isn't really a great way, like if there's a thing in resources we can link to a Google yeah, Doc, but it's not that works. great. So no, it's a little bit of work to grab that link and use the lessons tool and highlight some text and add the link to it. So there isn't a, a right now there isn't a, a great way to link those up. So it is a little bit more manual, but as I said, Sakai has that Google Docs, like mm -hmm. instead of adding a resource it'll say add a Google Doc. I've tried using that and yeah. it doesn't seem to it doesn't always want to work. No. So I find this is seamless and flawless. Right. But the cool thing is that you know the links will all stay the same when you copy your Sakai site. So when you copy it from one semester to the next, the link is the same and if you need to update that document you just go in and edit it a little bit. So that's it's it's still it works from semester to semester better than it did copying the courses and have multi having multiple versions of these documents. You guys have any other questions for us? 
You can put it in the question pod or you can put it in the chat pod. Has anybody else used this? Open that one too. Which one? The chat pod. Anybody want to look at any more examples or anything? That's a good question. Okay. Do students have to be logged into a Google account to access the link? No, they do not. So the way that we shared it, you, there's multiple sharing options. And one, the one that we use is anyone with the link can view. So that's what we use for the students. So they don't have to be logged in at all. We have Office 365. I'm wondering if we can do something similar. Um, yes. So with Office 365, and, and I know that Microsoft has said now this is free for people and so forth, there are sharing options that are very similar. So you can, um, you can absolutely get a share link and post that. So it, it would be fine. Any, any cloud-based system. And, and in fact, the Microsoft Office might be better because you can like edit those PowerPoints online. So it's a little bit, if you're used to PowerPoint, the tools are, are the same as, as the, the version on your desktop. So Office 365 is going to make some good inroads. Obviously, that's sort of new. And Google Docs has been around a little bit longer. So that's why we got started with the Google. Um, it's, Which I think at 365 now and the free access is in response to. Absolutely. So Microsoft is trying to catch up, and I think that it, it you know, maybe it'll be a, a better option. Maybe we'll do that next year. Which one is better? But um, but we but the Google Docs works really well. It's tried and true, and it's been around for a while now. So um, it's it's really smooth. Do we we get everybody's questions answered? I think so. Okay, well, thanks everybody for coming to our presentation. Um, again, I, I uploaded the link into our, our shared Sakai site for this conference. Um, if you want to access this, or you can jot down our, our bit.ly or send us an email if you have other questions about how we conquered this organization problem and found some really great advantages for using um, Google Drive. Um, and linking to Sakai and, and interacting with the students and being being pro strippers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Tamara and Debbie. You guys did a great job um, presenting and showing us all about Google Drive. Um, so for any of you who came in a little bit late, um, the session was recorded. It will be posted at a later date. It won't be available immediately, but we will send out the links to folks to get to those recordings about a week or so after the conference. So you can always watch it um, a little bit later if you missed the beginning. Um, I'm going to close out this webinar uh, window now, and so what you'll want to do is close out this uh, viewer and return to the conference site. Um, remember that each site has its own or each presentation has its own URL, so you'll want to select the one for the keynote, which is what's coming up at 10. So um, once again, thank you very much, and I'll see you in some of the other sessions today. All right, thanks, Wilma. Thanks, Wilma. Bye. Bye. Bye.